Welcome to part three. So far in this series, we've been working alongside our friend Dave Tucker, fabricating the custom fuel tank for Nick Sharp's Moto Guzzi Cafe Racer. Today, we'll be finishing off the tank and getting it ready to send off to Nick. This footage of Dave was filmed by our friend Kathy on a mobile phone and was sent to us to edit together. Thanks for joining us. Let's get started. At last, we are approaching the beginning of the end. Uh, the main job left to do now is to flush off the, the welds uh, and get them all nice and smooth uh, and uh, get the whole thing looking really sort of generally tank-like. Uh, primary weapons in this uh, mission, first of all, the trusty angle grinder uh, equipped with a uh, selection of flat discs. Uh, moving along, the equally familiar electric drill, also equipped with flat wheels, very similar uh, system, uh, just each getting it smoother as we, we go along. And then once we've, um, we've had a play with the power tools, we finish up with the real high tech stuff, a Scotch Bright pad. Just slapped on in the traditional manual fashion and that will give us our final finish on the tank. Uh, the only other thing we'll be looking at sort of as we go along, or we'll just keep an eye out for, is because the metal has seen a lot of heat during the welding process, uh, there may be little bits of distortion here and there. So we'll be just gently massaging a few things back into place, probably uh, with, a, with one of our panel hammers. Uh, just to uh, just to address that, but otherwise, um, hopefully, we're nearly there. I'm going to give you a brief demo of just uh, cleaning up a short section of weld on the tank, just just along here. Uh, as before, this would normally be done in the grinding bay with extraction, breathing equipment, all the, all the normal stuff to keep the, uh, the the dust and the muck under some kind of control. Uh, we're just going to do this out on the bench because um, it does make it a bit easier for filming. Uh, we'll start by just giving it a quick squirt of uh, WD-40. That's We're just using that as a, basically as a coolant. Uh, it just, just helps keep the, alumin the temperature of the aluminium under a bit of control. Uh, then we'll come in with the first tool which is the angle grinder with the first of the flat discs on. Right, that's just uh, skimmed off the well. Now we make, hopefully, a very, very quick change of disc. A little more oil. Now this is the smoothest of the three discs from on the uh, grinder. That's us done with the angle grinder. We now uh, move in with the electric drill. Again, another squirt of oil. It's cool. Now we're coming in with the smoothest of all the uh, all the wheels. Just give it a final go over. And that's blended 
that's blended that section quite nicely. Now we'll just give it the, uh, the go with the, uh, the Scotch Bright pad. And final smooth grade pad. Now, the fingertip test, is it smooth? Yeah, that, that's really not too bad. Yeah, happy with that. Uh, now, as ever, just the rest of the tank to go. So we'll see you in a bit. Before we get to the grand finale of the Moto Guzzi tank build, uh, we have a few inquiries about what else we get up to. Uh, and there are a fair few bits and bobs. Um, these, for example, are, again, aluminium fuel tanks, so, so similar in some ways, but uh, for a very different kind of motorcycle. Um, these are tanks for Greaves, uh, in this case the DD and the DCX. Um, these have been made for Gary Bamford at uh, British Bikes 1970, uh, Greaves specialists. Um, now the purpose here is to actually, we, we built these as, as near as we can, perfect replicas of the Greaves original tanks, but they of course were fiberglass, um, whereas uh, these are aluminium. Uh, the, the reason for the switch in materials being that the, uh, the problems are being encountered with the modern fuels, with the, with the ethanol in. Right, now for something completely different. Uh, these are a, a bit of a trip back to the Roaring Twenties, um, in that they are 1929 pattern uh, Sunbeam oil tanks. Uh, this one, as you can see, is virtually complete, just needs a bit of tidying up. And here we have the assembled componentry of, of four more of them. Um, just uh, waiting to, to be completed. Now, these are, as I said, something completely different in that they are mild steel construction and they're actually soft soldered together rather than using any kind of a welding process. Uh, the great day has finally dawned. The tank is physically finished uh, and it's not looking too bad really. Uh, quite happy with how it's come out. Um, Obviously, it has taken a little bit longer than we planned, uh, and there are a number of reasons for that, most of which I won't bore you with. Uh, well, there is one uh, cause of, of, of that delay which I would like to draw your attention to, and that is in this area here. The aero-style cap, which Nick has selected for this, uh, this tank, doesn't feature its own vent, its own breather, therefore, has to have it uh, a separate breather. Now that's not ideal for the aesthetics of the uh, tank. So rather than make what would probably be a bit of a half-hearted attempt to hide the breather, we've actually gone the other way and made it something of a feature by making this little uh, mount for it uh, with the, the ring of bolts to match the aero cap. And as, as sort of the icing on the cake, we've had it anodized to match the finish of the cap as well. And that uh, sort of brings us to a mention for some, some guys who, who helped us out a lot with that. Uh, teen Metal Finishes, uh, they really did go above and beyond when it came to, uh, to matching the anodized finish as closely as possible. Um, so yeah, a big shout out to them. You probably noticed earlier that I referred to the tank as being physically finished. And yes it is. The one thing it isn't, or hasn't done as yet, is that it hasn't passed a leak test. And I cannot overstress how important leak testing is for fuel tanks, particularly new ones. Uh, the various different methods that people use for leak testing, my personal preference is just get the tank doing what it's designed to do. Fill it with fuel, in this case petrol, right to the brim, and then leave it for as long as possible, ideally overnight. Now, that aspect of it might seem a little bit over the top. Uh, you might say, if it's gonna leak, it's gonna leak in the first 30 seconds. And yes, that's perfectly reasonable, but 
the only thing the extended test can help with is if you've got a, a, a porosity in a weld or something like that. Uh, I have had one instance where the extended test did find that out. We, we had a tank that took a full 12 hours to actually start leaking. Um, and, and the test, you know, saved, saved that tank from going out before, uh, before it could be rectified. Um, what we do, as I say, so brim full of fuel, then once it's sat for the uh, suitable time, I check it, then someone else checks it. Once we're both happy that there are no leaks, then it can be, it's passed the test and it can be drained and uh, yeah, we, we can go forward from there. Well, there we have it. Uh, it's passed its leak test, so it's all over. Um, really, all there is now is just to, remains to uh, thank Nick uh, for allowing us to film his, his tank build. Uh, to thank Kathy for uh, doing all the filming. Thank Alex and all the guys at the Classic Motorcycle Channel for uh, putting this together and putting it out there. And finally, thank all you guys for taking time out of your, your day or your evening or middle of the night, whenever you're watching this, um, to watch me bluster on about what it is that I do. Very much hope you've enjoyed it um, and hopefully we'll catch up soon.